Stephen, it is lovely to meet you. How are you getting on today? Doing well, thank you, Olivia. Am I right in saying now that you actually have some Irish heritage yourself? I do. Have indeed. you looked into it? Yeah, my mother. <laughs> your your man, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love I, my my nanny was Irish, and uh, so yeah, I'm half half Irish. Have you gotten to go and visit at all? Oh, sure. I love Ireland, and, uh, and uh, I've worked there as well, shot there. Yeah, I love Ireland. Oh, well, listen, I, honestly, I could probably like talk about how great Ireland is for quite some time, but we are here to talk about the long-awaited Avatar sequel. So, for you yourself, were you surprised to get the call to say, oh, by the way, we'd like to have you back? I was surprised initially when Jim uh, mentioned to me, quite casually, actually, back in 2007, wow. we hadn't even finished shooting the original Avatar, that uh, he had plans for the character. I was thrilled to hear that, but I couldn't really let myself get too excited about it, because you never know. And then uh, in 2010, after our film came out, he told me in no uncertain terms I'd be back, and I said, really? And he said, oh, come on, I told you that already back in 2007. I said, I didn't believe you, you know, we both, <laughs> we were drinking beer. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, and so it kind of went from, from there, and, and then when I read the script, uh, I was pretty amazed at the extent to which Quaritch really is engaged uh, as a central character in the story and, and very, very happy, of course. Yeah, because I'd say as, as much as the character is very similar, it is, it is a different character, essentially. Yeah. So it's probably a different experience for filming, especially being in the motion capture suits a bit more. Well, actually, you probably weren't in it at all for the first one. So how was that for you adapting to portraying the character, but also with all of these different sort of physicality demands? You know, you had to, we, we, we really had to find and decide and, and, and work on what, what, what's left of Quaritch, how much of Quaritch is still Quaritch, mm -hmm. you know, and what is new and what is that do to him and that's uh, that was something that we just sort of played with massaged and uh, rolled around uh, for the duration of the filming uh, working in the performance capture uh, environment was terrific I enjoyed it a lot because in so many ways I think performance capture is one of the defining kind of uh, it's the defining process of what avatar is you know and uh, um, and 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 a I saw, you know, being witness to the performance that Zoe gave, the performance that uh, Sam and, uh, and Sid gave, you know, I felt I want to do that too because they were totally uh, believable. They, they didn't seem at all to have been uh, inhibited or held back by the fact that they were working in performance capture. And so, um, you know, I, I, I loved working. In, in, in that way. And does your extensive theater work help you when you are preparing for a role that requires like a lot of green screen and the motion capture sort of angles? Like, does your theater prep help with that? Sure. I mean, theater, you know, acting, theater acting is, is a bit, it's technically different than working in film, but, uh, you know, on a very fundamental level, acting is acting, although I'm sure people would attack me for saying that, but it's all about telling the truth. It's all, you know, it's all about the honesty and the authenticity, about just communicating. It's about listening and responding. It's just, you know, it's not that, it's not that complicated, but it's not easy to do. Okay. Uh, it seems to me whether you are, uh, and, and having worked, uh, in the theater for as many years as I have, uh, you know, I, I, I suppose it, it helps. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and look, it, Avatar has just become like this, it's a, a beast in amongst itself. It's a massive franchise now. Yeah. So are you surprised at all? Or are you kind of just like, I always knew I was onto a good thing by signing <laughs> onto this? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it was, uh, I don't think at the beginning, I don't think we had any way of knowing. I don't think anybody did. And you know, I think it's interesting that when the first Avatar came out, they hadn't done a huge amount in terms of, you know, um, the, the stuff that comes with a franchise, you know, mm -hmm. the action figures and all. They did some, but not a whole lot, it seems to me, because who knew? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The whole thing could have gone, <laughs> but it didn't. It became, I think, a globally, a global cultural kind of phenomenon in, in a way. And so the last number of years have been really interesting as people have gotten ready kind of for it, including all the attendant sort of franchising things. I mean, I've been, I remember when they opened the, the, the Disney, uh, Disney World. That yes, the Pandora It was area. extraordinary. It was absolutely, it's wonderful. It's, it's just fantastic. And, um, and so now at this point, I'm not, I'm not surprised, but I never want to get jaded about it. I'm always thrilled. I saw myself as a Lego the yes. other day. <laughs> 
And I mean, I find that really, really wonderful. You know, I'm a Lego. <laughs> and it is wonderful. And listen, thank you so much. I can't wait to see what, what happens next now in the, in the next one. All right, Pat. It's good to see you.